everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the Singer 15-91, and I'm going to go over how to reinstall the potted motor. Uh, when you saw in the last video, you probably saw a bunch of dirt and dust here. I took the opportunity while the motor was off. It's a lot easier to clean behind here. Uh, so when you got the motor off, you might as well. And uh, so that's been cleaned up, a lot easier to access. And now I'll turn the head of the machine a little bit more toward you guys and the camera. And let's see. Uh, so <clears throat> this is, of course, the potted motor. I showed you guys the uh, replacing the wick and grease in the, uh, the grease reservoirs, grease tanks. Um, and I showed you guys this one. I went ahead and did this one. Um, uh, after I finished that video and again it's done the same way there's not anything different the the positioning of the um, of the clip that holds the wick is sim uh, symmetrical so it faces uh, it's the opposite it goes on the left so but anyway it's very symmetrical and um, doesn't really involve anything different than this one so uh, we're going to install the motor before I do well, I'd show this to you guys. There's an oiling point that you can access right here, e even when the machine is all put together. There's another spot here where the drive shaft is turning, and I thought I'd go ahead and put a little uh, oil, a couple of drops of oil there while I have the motor off. thought that would be useful. And again, you're not flooding it. You're just wanting to get a little lubrication in there. Now, I'm going to slide, and you want to do this, you don't want to scratch up your, your, uh, your motor or your um, drive shaft here. So I'm just going to kind of sit the motor on the drive shaft, okay? And you'll see the, the cord down below wanting to go where it naturally goes. We'll leave that there for now. It's not a big deal. That we can, uh, we can fix once the motor's on. We don't need the motor to be off to do that. Uh, let's see. Now... Remember, we've got those two screws that came off, and we want to put them back on. I'm referring to these. These two screws are really high-quality steel. By the way, when I was uh, cleaning up the, the, the behind the motor there, I found, look what I found. I bet you guys that thread will sometimes want to sneak, get sneaky and find its way into your, um, to your, uh, Around the hand wheel area is another area, uh, and it often happens because of the bobbin winding. So it not, doesn't hurt to check that out while you're doing all this. Now, so what are we going to do? Uh, I am going to clean in a little alcohol bath these two screws. Um, I really would like them to be nice and clean when they go into these holes here. Uh, just dip them in there for very briefly and... Then I am going to, they might have a little bit of old grease on them. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to put one drop, and I often do this with a lot of screws. Um, I didn't have any problem getting these out, but sometimes, you know, who knows how long it's going to be before this thing needs to be um, uh, serviced again, this motor. But I'll just put one drop of sewing oil on the end of this bolt. Okay. And it's going to work its way down the threads. One drop is all you need. You're not you're not going crazy here. And I'll do the other one. And again, just just one. Make sure I'm getting in focus here. One drop. Boom. That's it. And as I put the screws in, it will feed uh, all the way into the to the threaded holes, and you're good. So uh, I am going to make sure I get the right. Uh, uh, yeah, screw tip head here, and I do. I have this is the one I want. So this is, uh, I believe, the one I use taking them out. Now, uh, it is useful to have either a magnetized screwdriver or one that is that that holds this pretty well because you may typically find that sometimes they fall and you have to go and grab them and start over. What you want to do though is take a look here inside. Let me move the camera here because I want you to see. Hmm. Hmm. Cap to my. Here we go. I should think that's going to show up for you guys. Let me zoom in a bit. 
A little zoom might help here. Okay, I'll look through here and see what you guys are seeing. Now, you can see the holes behind the holes of the motor. Uh, you can see the holes in the head of the machine. But this is something you need to kind of try to steady because uh, it's going to want to wobble on you and it'll take you off of uh, the alignment with the screw holes. So I can hold it there. I'm going to try to get one of them started. Oh, and of course, it fell off. Um, if you can't get it to stay on here, you can magnetize the screwdriver if you don't have one magnetized. And another option is to simply take a little bit of the Singer grease, put it on the end there, and it'll act as kind of a little bit of a paste to, to, keep, the, to keep the screw on there. You can see where I put the, the grease. And grease is going here, so it's not a big deal. And that'll kind of hopefully hold that on there long enough for you to get your bolt in. So I'm going to come in here and, and it's kind of a ways in there, but hold the motor as you're doing this, guys, because if you don't, the motor is fairly heavy and it's going to push on your bolt or your screw and it's going to, it could cause issues with your the threads of your screw or getting it in there. Now, I'm not putting it all the way in and I'll explain in a minute why. So let's go to the other one, the one for the right hand side. We're going to put that one in. Make sure you guys can see this. And having done this before, I'm still getting lucky. Sometimes these things will, will uh, you need to make sure you get your, th your, your, your screw started. I can see it's going in. Sometimes they fall. In fact, they most frequently do. Don't let that bother you. Just pick it out of there and start over. Now, uh, one of the things to note here is that you have some play here. So I'm going to loosen this screw a bit. I want both of these screws to seat properly. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little bit of play. And it was designed this way. So you want to be sure that as you tighten these screws that the motor doesn't wiggle way off out of alignment. Um, you don't want it um, interfering with your screws going all the way in there. So I'm just turning, and my little extension here sometimes gets in the way next to the drive shaft, so I might have to. What I can do now that I've gotten them started is I can take a different screwdriver, and I'm not going to torque them all the way down with this screwdriver. However, it will give me, I can get in here and just get more of the, more of the turning done for the moment. Come over here and do it with this one as well. And then I'm going to come back with my extension. Um, now that I've got most of this done. It's a good fit, this screwdriver tip, but it's a little snug, and but not overly so. It just takes a little bit longer to seat it. And notice I'm doing, I'm kind of going back and forth, tightening each one of these a little bit at a time. I don't want to over tighten on one end and not the other. I like balancing this. It's almost like lug nuts on a car wheel. Um, and I'm going to, now that my motor is nice and solid, I'm going to turn and Gradually tightening them. I don't have a, a torque specification here, um, but I'm going to tighten them as they start to snug up. This one is now coming in there. I'm just going to come back and tighten them a little bit more. And these are, it's hard to describe. I'm going to tighten them until they stop. They're, they're more than snug, though, right? Just a slightly more because they're holding the motor in place. But again, that's still good. I've oiled them. So again, it, this one's nice and, nice and tight. But if I want to take it off, it still will, right? But just tighten them until they snug close. You, again, don't torque them like you're... You're not, I just mentioned uh, lug nuts on a car, but you're not going to tighten them that tight. 
right? You're, this is not a big heavy duty trunk barreling down the road, but you know, it's fairly snug. Now, one thing I had mentioned to you guys about grease, we've got grease here and it's gonna be feeding into the bearings, but we also are going to need grease for our hand wheel. And I'm gonna do a separate video on the hand wheel cleaning and greasing it, uh, mainly because it's the Textilite gear. Uh, but I can take my Singer lubricant and I can put uh, a little extra in here because this whole area is going to function like kind of a grease reservoir in a way. You don't need to fill this whole thing up. Don't You don't need to put that much in, okay? And this is going to be turning and it'll, eventually, it'll work its way into uh, that area around the worm gear. And let's see, what's the last thing we need to do to get it get the motor reinstalled, I'm going to, we're going to go back and we'll go back to the terminal that you guys saw when I took it off. Now remember the Singer terminal, terminal has three pins. There's a, number one is yellow, number two is black, there's no color on it, and then there's number three. Three is your hot wire. Uh, I'm going to, um, this by the way, the, the cord that's on here, you're seeing one wire going to yellow and the other wire going over here to red. And that is, um, that's the, the, the wire, the two wires that make up the cord to the light fixture. <clears throat> now the motor, it's got two wires in its cord. One of them, and it's still marked with red here. If yours doesn't have that when you take it off, it'd be a good idea to put a little piece of red tape or, or nail polish there so you know uh, which one is which. So you're going to take that one on this one here where my finger is touching, and it's going to be going on this terminal pin right here. So I'm going to take that and I know that the other one is going on to the center pin so I might as well go ahead and take take this off as well. Ooh, come here. Don't let you go anywhere. Okay so I've got my the two wires. Make sure this is showing up for you guys. Okay so I'm going to come in here and they're kind of like a Y shape, right? And they need to, I may have to lift the, the uh, light fixture wire up a bit. I want to get these in here so that they all seat well, and they should. There we go. Had to turn this wire just a bit. Yeah. Now, let's put, if you guys can see this, okay. So I'm going to have my here's my uh, one of the wires from my motor is going here on the center, okay, and it's on t it's just sitting there. I'll go ahead and put the the nut back on because these things are kind of like like uh, you know trying to herd puppies. You know sometimes you'll put one on and another one will come off there when you got the when you got these little um, wire nuts. I think they're called. Uh, not wire nuts. These are, um, uh, they're sort of a knurled uh, uh, nut that, that you use to secure the wires here to the pins. Now I'm going to put this one on. Now uh, one, one thing you want to check, okay, these are brass nuts, but the outside's plastic. They're fairly durable and strong, but don't over torque them till you split them, but they need to be snug. If they're not, you're not gonna get a good connection and you could have issues getting power. So I turn it until it's snug and, and it's then it starts to slow down and stop. I'm like, okay, there you go. Now, uh, we have that big giant uh, bolt that's going to, oh, by the way, notice that as I come down with the terminal, remember it's just hanging loose here, your wires, want to come right behind this piece, okay? They don't, they don't come over, they come behind, and there's a space between this and the body of the machine that gives you that, that, that spot there, and this wonderful terminal design that Singer had. And again, I'm gonna put a drop of oil on the end of this, a couple drops, so that it goes back in. Again, that may seem overly detailed, but you know, what the heck. It's, it's, it's going to prevent you from having to um, fight with it in the future or someone, whoever else, uh, may actually go uh, to 
disassemble this in the future. You never know when it could uh, be time for more maintenance. And this bolt is very easy to get in. I just grabbed a different screwdriver because, uh, let's see, this piece, it goes in further and sometimes this stops things. So I'll get a different screwdriver. This bolt, by the way, like many on sewing machines, it needs to be snug, but it doesn't need to be overly tight. And it's not going anywhere. Just make sure it's not loose, nice and snug. There you go. Okay, so we have our wires back in place and we've got the motor reinstalled. We've got new grease, new wicks. Um, the uh, next video, I will talk about the hand wheel and how you clean and then lubricate the hand wheel. It's not that involved, but, but there's some precautions you should take with this particular hand wheel. And uh, we will have taking care of both the hand wheel and servicing the motor for the Singer um, 15-91 potted motor design, uh, beautiful motor design, fantastic, just time consuming to service, but it can be done. It's not, you know, it's it's kind of, if you do it a step-by-step -step type, of, type of thing, um, but just don't be in a hurry when you're doing this, because if you are, you're not gonna like the results. Take your time, um, and uh, anyway, uh, stay tuned for the next video when we will get the hand wheel in, and then uh, we won't be too far away from doing some test stitching and we'll finally get to plug everything back in. Thanks for watching everyone.